Hello and welcome to this demonstration of EMC Unisphere for VMAX 10K, 20K, 40K. My name is Faraz Faruqi and I'm the Senior Technology Consultant with EMC. I'm also the Technical Account Manager for the Western Province in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, today I will walk us through how easy it is to provision uh, storage on a VMAX 40K. Um, the message that EMC has for its customers is the built-in intuitiveness and above all, simplicity of managing an enterprise storage array that the EMC Unisphere for VMAX tool provides. Most data centers today, especially in the service provider hosting arenas, have several critical areas where agility basically means success. Um, and it all comes down to the time to provision for the ever-increasing data center projects. And storage provisioning comes under similar constraints and Unisphere for VMAX platform ensures that storage operations continue to be effective uh, and agile at the same time, ensuring success of the organization. Uh, let me take you through the auto provisioning capability of the Unisphere for VMAX uh, tool. Um, the provisioning feature on the Symmetrix VMAX platform is called auto provisioning and it's broken down into four steps. We'll just first log into the, uh, the management tool. Uh, the EMC units for, for VMAX GUI. Uh, while we're connecting just a little bit about the environment, this is a VMAX 40K array that is located currently in our lab environment in Santa Clara, USA. Um, the VMAX 40K in this particular situation is configured with uh, about 20 gigabytes of storage, or two uh, front and director ports, and uh, we're going to connect a virtual host uh, in our in our demo. So, uh, before we go ahead, just want to quickly go through some of the things that you will see when you when you are um, when you arrive at the landing page or the home page for the EMC Unisphere for VMAX GUI. Uh, you're able to see the VMAX that you have selected in your environment. Um, in a snapshot, it tells you about the serial number, which is very important uh, for your VMAX, and also tells you about the microcode level of the VMAX 40K in this case. There's a uh, snippet of an alert uh, section, talks about system alerts and any critical alerts that have occurred on the system. And also you can look at the available capacity on the, on the VMAX uh, from a bird's eye view uh, perspective. You hover your mouse pointer on the capacity bar and tells you about how much percentage of it is available. Uh, down at the bottom here is the legend uh, for the capacity indicator. Uh, you're also able to go into the alert section. You can drill down on them and uh, understand each and every alert. Now, I'm just going to quickly select the VMAX. And now, just before I do that, I just want to mention that this EMC Unisphere for VMAX GUI is the single pane of glass to manage uh, one or more than one array in your local or remote data centers. For instance, we are currently connecting from Riyadh or Jeddah to Santa Clara. Uh, here is my my storage selector. I can select however number of VMAXs that I want to manage in this environment or in my environment. In this case there's only one uh, which is what we are connecting to remotely but you could have had local VMAXs, VMAXs configured uh, that you would like to manage uh, one by one. Now just to uh, just a word on uh, managing of symmetrics arrays. You can also manage VNX arrays through this very GUI. So let's just go ahead and select the VMAX uh, um, uh, icon here and you'll notice that on the top you'll have an expanded uh, array of uh, system tabs or, or, or tabs that actually allow you to um, uh, manage this, to configure the VMAX 40K um, or manage the storage which is uh, residing in the VMAX uh, 40K uh, in terms of creating storage groups, assigning fast policies, creating thin pools, and uh, creating templates, storage templates that you can create, uh, volumes, uh, any external storage that you want to virtualize, etc. You can also configure uh, initiators for hosts um, and initiator groups for a number of hosts, um, port groups on the uh, front end directors that uh, belong to a certain uh, zone. Um, you can also configure replication local and remote from uh, from this uh, tool and you can also actually drill down into performance monitoring and analyze the reports that you uh, that you collect uh, and last but not least um, we're shortly going to have this capability to access online help 
uh, from within the EMC units for, for VMAX GUI. So let's just quickly go ahead without further ado, let's provision some storage um, and let's see how easy and, and, and quick this uh, procedure really is. So we'll click on the array and then we'll have available to our, our uh, far right in the right hand pane common administration tasks, for instance, create a new host, so which we will click on and as soon you'll see that there will be a, a wizard based uh, approach uh, that will be launched a wizard based GUI which is the host management create host GUI uh, we'll select the VMAX uh, that we have in, in our environment um, this is a virtual host so I'll, I'll just call it for the sake of this demonstration ESX12 underscore 12 and um, I'll just select the label for the initiator group that's already been configured um, for this, uh, for this, uh, for this virtual host, uh, it could have been more than one virtual host for which this initiator group, initiator group was configured, and we're done. We click on finish, and our create host step is completed. Now we'd like to provision storage to this host internally within the VMAX. Um, this should again launch another uh, wizard for us to provision storage. As you notice, uh, our symmetrics is again populated, and the host that we chose, ESX underscore 12, um, is also selected automatically. Now, we can create a new storage group, or we can use an existing one. We'll just go ahead and create a new storage group, so we'll click Next. Uh, now, the Unisphere for VMAX GUI can automatically assign quick and dirty regular volumes should we need it, uh, just a 1 gig or 2 gig capacity. But we'll go ahead and manually select those volumes just to be able to, to show the granularity uh, and control that the administration ha administrator has even with this tool. Um, so here we are. Uh, we see a whole bunch of volumes that are configured with different uh, settings. For instance, some of them are two-way mirrors. Some of them just are um, or just the uh, LUNs. We'll just uh, take one for the sake of demonstration and, and proceed with that. It tells us that, uh, or actually, you know, what? we'll just add two just in case, uh, just to signify this particular operation. Uh, so here we have two existing volumes that we've chosen, and the total capacity is four gigabytes. We'll just click next, and that should. Um, that should create uh, our storage group. Now the last, uh, the third and last step um, in this uh, in this uh, auto provisioning approach is to provision with the storage group. Uh, bind the initiator, the host that we had created with the storage groups that we had created under a masking view. So this is our third step. If you notice, uh, it talks about port group definition, so it gives a logical name to our port group for the host that we chose, and it automatically selects the port, the front end director ports, to which the physical volumes inside the VMAX are mapped to. Uh, all we have to do is click Next, and uh, it suggests a uh, appropriate name for the masking view, and we are done. So we just click on Finish, and we wait for this uh, to be completed on the storage side. Um, now, if any additional devices need to be presented to a host, um, they only need to be added to the storage group in order for the masking and mapping to be automatically created, which we just did, uh, as we all know, as we all noticed. Um, now, what we can do at this time is we can associate this storage group with a FAST policy. FAST, as you may know, is our fully, fully automated storage tiering um, um, uh, feature and functionality. Again, something that differentiates us from the rest of our competitors. However, at this time, we're not going to take any further action because we are just done from the storage side. And what I'd like to do is uh, demonstrate what you would do ideally on, uh, in a real-world environment. Uh, in this case, we are going to log into our virtual host um, because we have chosen v, vSphere. So we'll just log into um, vCenter, uh, um, which is the management tool for virtual hosts in a VMware environment. Now, if you were to log into a physical, for instance, Windows 95 or Win Windows Server 2008 host, you would just go into Disk Management uh, and find the inactive LUN, assign a drive letter to it, format the drive, and voila, you have the drive available for storage. Now, uh, VMware administrators are very familiar with this screen. They just go to the Configuration tab um, we, for this particular host. We notice um, that uh, there are storage adapters that are configured. 
Uh, there are about two devices or two data stores that are already configured on this size SCSI soft initiator. So we'll just rescan uh, to make sure that any new devices that we just added also show up. Uh, we'll notice that uh, another LUN that we had, we had created uh, just popped in uh, or just popped up. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and add uh, storage now at this, at this time. Um, to this particular virtual host. Uh, again, we click on Add Storage. It launches an Add Storage Wizard in VMware. It's a disk or a LUN that, that we know. Uh, if you recall, we had selected two devices. Uh, we can choose uh, one or the other or both. Um, we'll lay a file system on it. The recent uh, VMware vSphere file 5 has a VMS5 file system that we'll put on it. This time, what it's doing is uh, it's just going to take the current disk layout uh, and the file system mapping to the target uh, iSCSI device uh, which is uh, on the EMC VMAX 40K. It tells us that a partition will be created. We'll give it a name ESX underscore 12 underscore uh, data store um, is our um, data store name that we chose and we'll choose the maximum av available space and here it is. We've just clicked uh, finish this is uh, the operation that's now going to launch uh, a data store creation within vCenter. Uh, we'll see on the bottom there's a VMS, VMFS data store operation in progress. We'll just click refresh just to make sure our data store launches uh, uh, quickly enough. And uh, we're waiting. <laughs> um, shows that we have a refresh in progress at the same time a VMFS uh, data store creation in progress. And there you have it, the ESX underscore 12 data store. Uh, let's just go into it, uh, find out what this is. Uh. So if you notice this is the extent size, it talks that this is, it tells us that this is an EMC iSCSI disk, which it is. Uh, it talks about the size of the partition, the total capacity that uh, we get after uh, we have formatted the drive. Uh, we can actually increase it uh, and further operations can be applied to it from a storage perspective. And there you have it. In, in relatively short time, um, we have provisioned storage and we have not only provisioned storage from the host side, we've also enabled the host itself to have storage availability and ready for any sort of project uh, uh, IT project that comes down. Uh, in a nutshell, the EMC Unisphere for VMAX tool increases data center storage administrators' agility in time to provision storage and ensuring IT operations is a success. Thank you very much for watching this demonstration with me.